to Williamson County Connection. I'm Carol Robinson, and today we are being connected with Sheriff Jeff Long. How Hi, you doing? Carol. How you doing, Mr. Sheriff? I'm doing great. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I've looked forward to this for a long time. I know. We've been kind of juggling for a couple of years now trying to get this going. I have been. I'm glad to be here today. Yeah. So, uh, let's get right to it. What's going on in the Sheriff's Department? You've uh, got a lot of new programs, a lot of new things you're going on. And, uh, and you made an impassioned speech the other day at the county commission. <laughs> I did read that. Uh, everybody's still talking about it. <laughs> well, I, I, I gave a heartfelt speech. Yes, I mean, sir. that came from the heart. I, I sure uh, did. Uh, this is about the 911 proposed center. Mm -hmm. and, and I had given quite a bit of thought to it. We had had uh, some of the discussions in the uh, budget committee. And then from that Tuesday night until the next Monday, I believe it was a Monday week till county commission, I got to thinking about it. And, and you know, Everybody wants Williamson County to still have that small town or small mm -hmm. community feel, and, and that's what we love about it, and right. we do have that. But I think it's important that we not forget that now we're a major metropolitan area. Yeah. I mean, we're a large county. Uh, we have an enormous population and moving that way every day. Yeah, what, when they say it's predicted to be uh, 250,000 people within, within about five, five to six years. years. Mm -hmm. We're at 193 or four, I think now, mm -hmm. uh, 250 in that number of years. And then I heard another projection the other day within a period of time that uh, we will probably surpass Chattanooga, Hamilton County, and be the fourth largest in the state. Wow. So, you know, what I was trying to stress to, to the commission and to the public is that we now have worldwide companies here, which mm -hmm. I didn't think 10 years ago I would ever see. Right. Uh, we have national companies here, mm -hmm. and with those come security interest that people don't think about. Right. And we have to be able to deal with those potential problems, and we have to be able to protect those businesses, the people that work in those businesses. You know, we have Nissan North America, uh, who is really a worldwide and company. Made, and this is their North American headquarters. This is their North American headquarters, and we have to be able with Franklin to protect those people. And uh, so we have to start looking at this on a broader scale, mm -hmm. and, and we have to have a facility uh, that should we have a disaster that we can still carry on the business. Uh, you know, yeah, we learned from the flood. <laughs> we learned a lot from the flood, and and 911 center, if you'll mm -hmm. remember, was nearly flooded. It was. And so, uh, uh, you know, as I said that night, the emergency is to whoever's having the emergency. Mm -hmm. If your loved one is in an emergency and having a heart attack, and you can't get 911 or you can't get a response. Uh, you're naturally interested in your emergency. Right, right. So that's what we're it's trying to personal. plan. It's personal. That's exactly right. And we're trying to plan that for the future. Mm -hmm. um, and it, have there, now there's been a lot of talk about uh, underground bunkers mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, what were you, what were you uh, going? Just are you were you just trying to make make sure everybody knew the importance of having a 911 center? Or? Well, yes, because you know you got to remember that's a dispatch center. Mm -hmm. That dispatches for our sheriff's office, for Fairview, for Nolansville, for the rescue squad, for the fire countywide. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, E911, the uh, uh, EMA group and all of that. So it's not just a single dispatch. It's for everything other than really Franklin and Brentwood uh, across the county. So what I was trying to make the impact is is that that is a large amount of the service that we have to protect. Mm -hmm. And uh, the facility that they've proposed, it's really, it's called a bunker, but I don't think it's really a bunker. <laughs> I think that's sort of a misnomer for it. <laughs> The part of it will be backed into the hill toward mm -hmm. the old quarry, if most people know where that is right. by the uh, uh, highway department, right mm -hmm. next to the jail. Mm -hmm. So just the lay of the land will protect part of it. The front of it and all the rest of it will be exposed. However, it will be a uh, building that uh, will be constructed that will withstand tornado winds that it has to do. So that's that's what's got a lot of people really. And it's high about enough; it. it'll withstand any floods. Any floods. So we got it, tornadoes, floods, earthquakes. Earthquakes. It'll withstand mm -hmm. a certain Richter on because the. Because people earthquake. don't realize how close we are to that well, big right fault that goes through Memphis. Fault. Yeah. yeah, we're right at the edge of it, and I've seen the projections, and we'll ha uh, we'll have damage uh, if it's the quake uh, they think it and, will be. And they're talking about the damage of. Um, above and beyond what San Francisco had oh, absolutely. many years ago. Absolutely, yeah. Especially with buildings being so close and all the electronics and electricity and stuff like that, we different underground pipes and stuff. Well, and things that, that uh, you know, I've seen the surveys on that a lot of people hadn't thought about is if you have a severe quake is that uh, bridges collapse. Mm -hmm. 
and especially on the interstate system. Right. Uh, I know there's some uh, planning at one time. You think about, we have traffic problems now? Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, I know there's some planning at one time. You know, if Memphis were to be the center of the quake or the one worst damaged, getting equipment supplies down 40 to them, if the bridges on the interstate were wiped out, how would you get to Memphis? Yeah. So those are things that uh, we all have to plan for, and that's the reason for planning with this building is we're looking for a 40 or 50 year plan. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not anything that's just gonna be up and then have to rebuild in three or four years. This is something that the county will have, be proud of, and, and will serve the community for a long, long time. And what kind of impact will that have on the Sheriff's Department? Well, of course, as the county grows, we grow. Mm -hmm. and, and also the jail grows, which we have the responsibility for. Uh, our training division is in a portable, sort of like, a, I call it a portable classroom, like schools have. Mm -hmm. And that's what our training division is, is we train all of our officers out of. Uh, if we ever expand the jail, the most logical place will be put a wing on in our existing parking lot behind the fence, which is our training area. So the proposal is, is that we will move part of that training, if not all of it, into this new building and share the classroom space that they're going to have with the other agencies and I think it'll be able to be utilized on a daily basis rather than not being utilized. All the agencies will be able to keep it full and keep it busy as the taxpayers would want if they're going to pay for it, they want it to be busy. Right. And since the flood, you have done, your, your, the Sheriff's Department has done um, a, a great deal of work on trying to uh, accumulate equipment. Uh, there were a lot of lessons learned and you've taken those lessons to heart and you're doing something about it. Well, as I, as I think I told you right after the flood, mm -hmm. and I know I told the commission, I, I don't normally make promises, but I made one promise. We will not be caught short like we were that right. time again. Everybody learned a lesson. Yeah. I mean, that was a major event that uh, we haven't had that many major events and you learn from them. Mm -hmm. And from that, yes, we started getting equipment. Uh, we, we at the Sheriff's Office really didn't even have a command post that you could operate out of for a consistent period of time on site if you right. needed to in an emergency. So now we have two of those. We have one that's a little bit more permanent than the other, and then we have uh, a mobile uh, command post which you could set up immediately. Mm -hmm. Also, we have some uh, housing that we could set up and, and allow shifts to rest a little while as they because, rotate yeah, out if it's a multiple day thing. Yeah. Also, we got uh, through, Some boats. and we've gotten all of this, I want to say, through the federal uh, surplus property mm -hmm. type uh, system is the way we've gotten it, and therefore the taxpayers haven't had to pay for it. Uh, we've got some rafts now. We mm -hmm. have to do water rescue, and also we started a swift water rescue team uh, that's a response team that if they need to go out and rescue, you know, I can remember standing uh, in one of the subdivisions the night of the flood and we still lack 63 people having them evacuated wow. out of one of the subdivisions at like 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so uh, everybody was so busy, we were waiting on boats and things like that. So we went ahead and ordered our own rafts and boats to where we would have that, uh, the trucks to pull it with. We also now have the big military trucks to where we can drive into the water. We have the Humvees now that you can drive into the water. Uh, we've got three generators that will self-power a subdivision area with lights and everything wow. to where we can light a subdivision up should mm -hmm. we need to. And, and the good thing about it, Carol, I think we looked the other day, we're probably at about a million and a half dollars, two million dollars worth of property, and it's probably cost the county uh, a total of maybe forty or fifty thousand dollars to get it, redo it the way we want it done, the gas to go get it. Mm -hmm. So really, we don't have much investment in a major, major. That, uh, yeah, uh, that operation. That's, yeah, that's something to be proud of, Sheriff. Well, we are. Um, and, and one of the things that I think people forget is all the swift water and the, and the water equipment, we have a major river that runs through our entire county mm -hmm. um, that at any given point there could be a tragedy on it. Oh, always on the Harpeth mm -hmm. River. We're, we're always called out there, especially when the water gets high. Right. So we're constantly responding to that. I'll tell you a real quick one. Uh, we just had a recognition of one of our Swift Water Rescue team members uh, at the uh, Assembly of God uh, in Franklin. Mm -hmm. They have what's called the Hope Awards. Right. And Corporal Keith Bennett with our office is on Swift Water. Uh, the BGA school was having their annual tug of war at the uh, mm -hmm. Harpeth River uh, recently, and some of the students jumped in, two of them did, and couldn't swim. Oh my gosh. And Keith. Yeah, because they all like to go. They all like to go in in celebration. Mm -hmm. 
Well, Keith watched one of the young men go under the water and could see that panicked look on his face. Mm -hmm. And then he went under again and Keith had to jump in and rescue that young man. If not, we'd have had a tragedy that day. Wow. So that alone, I mm -hmm. think, pays the benefit of having that swift water rescue team. Yeah, it does. And yeah, and that's what I guess what I'm trying to get at is while we're preparing for an emer a, a major emergency, um, there are minor emergencies that this equipment can be used. All the time, mm -hmm. all the time. And as I said, we're growing. You yeah. know, we're uh, 193,000, 194,000 people. Uh, people don't realize how large this county really is. We have 563 square miles uh, and it's as diverse uh, a county as you would ever it, oh, see. Oh, I know. People think that it's all roads and houses, but only there's, uh, I was talking to um, Mayor Anderson the other day, he said 63% of the county is still rural. That's right. That's right. A lot of people don't realize yeah. that because they uh, live north of Frank in the Franklin area, north mm -hmm. and uh, to the east and west of that. Uh, they don't get south much, and that's a lot of the rural areas. Or out west in my way. <laughs> out your way to the southwest mm -hmm. area out in there. Uh, a lot of rural country and everything. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's as diverse as anywhere you would want yeah. to be. And I think that's what makes Williams County unique. It, yeah, it does. And, and good planning because you want the major part of the um, population to be along the interstate corridor oh, Absolutely. Um, where the businesses are and stuff. And, yeah. uh, and then you still have that the agriculture and the mm -hmm. peaceful um, green space as they call it. Oh yeah, and that's what drew me and Dora to uh, Williams County. And that uh, was a long time ago. A long <laughs> time ago, in 1974, we had the opportunity luckily to relocate here and I had the opportunity to live in anywhere in Middle Tennessee and mm -hmm. uh, we came in off the interstate and got on Highway 96 coming in to Franklin and of course all of that at that time was just green pasture. Yeah. And when Dora saw that and then we got downtown and she saw the storefronts and saw the house, she said, there's no use to look anywhere else, this is it. <laughs> so we've been here 39 years, so this is home to us. It is, yeah. Um, now, you've got some new programs going on at the jails, um, different different things going on to um, support your staff and also make the jail safer for the inmates and, and a, a place that the county can be proud of. Well, we do. Um, you know, we started looking to try to break the recidivism rate. Mm -hmm. uh, we see a lot of the same family members, if not the same person, who do repeat crimes through the years. Uh, and we decided we've got to do something to address that. It, it's tough when you, they come in and you're their first name basis there. Well, yeah. and that's the way some of yeah. it is. And, and unfortunately, you know, I was here with the sheriff's office back in the 70s. I'm now seeing grandchildren of, of grandparents that mm -hmm. I dealt with back in those earlier days. So uh, we started one of the best programs is the GED program. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a GED program where uh, we offer that to people in the uh, uh, facility while they're in, in uh, incarcerated. And I'm happy to say we've graduated over 100 already through the GED program. Wow, that's That great. would not have had that education. Right. Uh, we're and, current. And now an, another opportunity. That's right. We're now in talks with Williamson Christian College mm -hmm. about furthering that to bring some college courses in and let them go ahead and start doing uh, some kind of program to advance that GED credit mm -hmm. while they're there. Uh, we looked at two options. One is like a uh, uh, certificate or, uh, type program where they commit uh, to so many classes and complete those and they get a certificate in technology or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and then later on they can also use those credits toward the college degree. So we're really excited about that. Uh, also, you know, a lot of people get in problems because of their temper. Right. And we have anger management problems. We have life skill problems. It amazes a lot of us to think that a lot of the inmates have never balanced a checkbook, don't know how. So we have programs now to where we're teaching them those financial uh, mm -hmm. aspects of life that they need, how to manage their money, uh, how to save their money, how to balance that checkbook. Uh, against the grain is one of the things that we yeah. use, you know, for domestic violence, great, which great, is great, great program. Uh, we're also offering uh, alcohol and drug treatment, anonymous programs and mm -hmm. other treatment, and then also our ministry. Uh, we have, uh, I think the figure right now is over 350 uh, individuals in the community who come and go through training programs that we have that minister to the inmates during the week at night. Uh, while they're incarcerated. So all those programs together, uh, we're real excited about. And then one of my special programs, I call it my special programs because it just lights me up, as you can tell when I talk about it, is our Senior Citizen Assurance yeah, Program. Yeah. We have a lot of seniors in the county who don't have 
loved ones that unfortunately live close by mm -hmm. to check on them. And so we have volunteers to call those people every day and check on them. And, and I think the volunteers get about as much pleasure out of that phone call as the senior mm -hmm. does. And of course, if we don't uh, get in touch with the senior and can't find them and we have a backup list and doctor's mm -hmm. list and things like that. And if we exhaust all of those and we still can't find them, then we'll go check them at the house to make sure they're not in the house. And that's, that's got them really reassuring to the seniors and to any family members that don't live close by and do worry about them that at least somebody is knocking on the door or che you know checking in because anything can happen. Anything can happen. We've had some, honestly, that we found that mm -hmm. uh, we've rescued that were down and couldn't get up. Mm -hmm. And because of the program, the, our deputies found them. So that has been a success. Uh, and then every year also we have a little annual uh, recognition luncheon for them. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just a great thing to, yeah. to, to help them in their life. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, you know, they're seniors. They've paid their taxes all this year, all these years. And, and this is another way that we can serve them as taxpayers uh, later in life. And it's all volunteers. It's so all it's volunteers. Co it doesn't, doesn't cost anything. anything. Yeah. It's amazing how you can do something. It sounds so simple. And you think, why isn't everybody doing this? Um, and, and it doesn't cost anything. Doesn't cost well, anything. Maybe a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah. Just the time of the volunteers, mm -hmm. uh, training the volunteers. We do a training session mm -hmm. with them. Of course, we do backgrounds on everybody. Right. Uh, so it, it's a little bit of time committed, but it's it's well well worth it. Yeah, and um, you, you have an autism program for children with autism. We do the yeah. tracking program. We do have an autism. It's uh, called life uh, life science, mm -hmm. uh, to where they uh, uh, have a tracking device like a bracelet uh, that we'll put on them and. Uh, uh, if they get confused or unlocated or something, we're able uh, to take a monitor and be able to find mm -hmm. them. And do you also use that with um, people with Alzheimer's? We do. We mm -hmm. do. Anybody that wants to sign up, uh, Lieutenant Steve Dunning is a coordinator of that uh, with our office. And if they'll call the sheriff's office, and uh, Lieutenant Dunning will be glad to discuss it with them and get them signed mm -hmm. up. And the uh, Senior Assurance Program. If anyone has a senior in the community or if you want to volunteer, uh, please call our office and we'll get you signed up. And what's that number? 790-5604. I'm going to give you the direct line. <laughs> That's my line, my direct line, and Vicki, my administrative assistant, mm -hmm. uh, will answer the phone and she'll get you directed to the right people. Yeah, you're not afraid to give out your line, are you? Well, I'm not, you yeah, know, I'm, I serve for. the public. That's what mm -hmm. I'm here for. Mm -hmm. I, I'm the sheriff and I have the honor of serving the sheriff and uh, the people of Williams County have been good enough to allow me to do that. And I, I want that contact. I mean, I want that closeness uh, with the community. Mm -hmm. and so what else is going on there? Uh, we're, we've been busy. Uh, we, we're trying to do some other things uh, uh, this week. Uh, we, uh, uh, as you know, I've, I've had some people who have been doing some training for the preparedness for disasters mm -hmm. and for unusual events. And uh, we're doing some training this week with our court security teams uh, in the event that an event happened at the uh, courthouse. Uh, we're doing training for about three days with those, getting those prepared. We've just gotten through uh, doing our different patrol shifts uh, with uh, shooter training and things like that. And, and we have that training going on constantly. Uh, we are revitalizing uh, our training section. Uh, you know, our, our people are only as good as we train them. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to bring that quality of training better. Uh, and I've challenged our staff for us to be the best in the state of Tennessee. And I think we're right on that track, and I'm firmly convinced that uh, we'll, we're there, if not already. Uh, I, I am so proud of our staff, Carol, that I would put our staff up against any other law enforcement agency in the, in the state of the nation. That's how proud I am of them. Uh, they do everything we ask them to do. They commit to the job. They put in the hours that are necessary. They want to be better, and we're just blessed to have who And this have. is a big county to cover. Well, like it you is. Said, it's five, over 500 square miles. Yeah, and 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 we're getting there. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, like any other agency, we have challenges. Our challenges is is that on each shift we don't have the number of personnel uh, that we naturally would like, but we have enough to keep the county safe. You mm -hmm. know, I, I assured the county commission with what we have, we have adequate numbers that we can have that quick response time to get to someone uh, who's in need. So I feel comfortable about that. Uh, but it's just constantly trying to update and trying to train and uh, trying to make our people better and to protect our citizens and that's who uh, we're responsible to and and as I told our uh, all of our employees you know we're a community service oriented operation mm -hmm. uh, they pay our salaries 
uh, and they'll remind us of that oh, yeah. while, you know, uh, if they <laughs> don't sure like the do. way something goes. <laughs> but uh, they're the ones that elect the county commissioners who do set our mm -hmm. salaries and pay our budget and things. So uh, we serve the public, and, and we want to remember that. Um, and speaking of serving the public, you recently received a special award from the uh, Tennessee State Sheriff's Association, did, yeah. Sheriff of the Year. Yeah, very, very honored by that. You know, when you're recognized by your peers, mm -hmm. that's pretty special. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm deeply humbled by that and very honored by that, that the other sheriffs in Tennessee um, thought I had done that. So yeah. that, I, I, I want to also make Williamson County proud. And if that's a way that Williamson County can be proud, that's even better. But as I said when I accepted it at the banquet, I accepted it on behalf of the employees of the Williamson County Sheriff's Office. They're the ones that do the work. Mm -hmm. I luckily get to take the credit. <laughs> and they're the ones that get out and do the work every day. And they're the ones that should get the plaque instead of me. But I have the honor of accepting that on their behalf. Um, so now we've talked about all the you know, programs and things like, tell, me, tell us about some of the challenges at the Sheriff's Department. Um, the J I know you've got a lot of inmates in that jail. Mm -hmm. Things tend to get a little crowded. You've got some of them from the state, some are local. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know the, the, oh, some of your challenges. Well, you always have challenges about every day. Uh, one of the things, of course, is the jail. I mean, mm -hmm. that's probably the biggest challenge because that's the basic, the biggest expense mm -hmm. that we have in our budget is through the jail operation. A lot of people don't understand that we have the only jail in Williamson County. They think that the different agencies have their own mm -hmm. jail. We house the prisoners for every law enforcement agency in our county as well as the state troopers, the TBI, any other state agency that makes an arrest in uh, Highway Patrol, anybody else in Williams County, we house those inmates. So our population, you know, we have to watch that population. Right. We have a 454 bed capacity. That's a little bit misleading because you can't actually use 454 beds. You have to divide the inmates by law by uh, sexual orientation, male, female. Mm -hmm. You also have to uh, divide uh, pre-trial and post-trial inmates. You have to, the sentenced and unsentenced, felons and misdemeanors. So uh, the, the And then usage, you have a juvenile jail. And then they have a juvenile part mm -hmm. that's isolated. By law, it has to be isolated totally. Matter of fact, we're the only one I think allowed in the state uh, to still have it under the same roof, more or less, the whole complex. Mm -hmm. Now they won't even let you put it on the same site. Wow. So once we ever remodel, it'll have to be a separate site mm -hmm. for juvenile. But, um, you know, we got up at one point to about 422 inmates on an average. We were getting about that Whoa. capacity level. Uh, we had not had any relief from the Department of Corrections with the state in quite some time because they had not built new prisons. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, they finally added on Bledsoe Regional Prison, and we were able for them to come and pick up 60 inmates uh, over a mm -hmm. short period of time, and that reduced our population, helping us quite Gives a bit. you a little breathing room. Gives us a little one. breathing room. We're averaging now about 330 inmates a day. Mm -hmm. And so medical cost of those inmates is our number one cost. Uh, if somebody's in there and, and we have to pay for their treatment, and we've had people with stage four cancer, we've had people with HIV, we've had people with heart problems, we've had it all. Addicts. Uh, addicts, uh, you know, that is a lot mm -hmm. of uh, money for health care. So that's our number one cost. That's one of our biggest challenges. Uh, we had a problem last couple of years with vehicles. We Our fleet was mm -hmm. getting in bad condition. and. Thankful to Mayor Anderson and the commission, uh, they have allowed us the opportunity to restock that fleet, and, and we're back in good shape on our, yeah, our fleet. Yeah, I see some so, of those nice new cars. Uh, they right? look good, and they we're proud good, of those. Yeah. I've got to get used to them now. <laughs> well, they look good, and we want the citizens to be proud of those, yeah. and, and we want them to look good and represent Williams County well. You know, our cars mm -hmm. go all over uh, the state and the country, and we want when they go to another area that people say, look at that, you mm -hmm. know, that's Williamson County. Yeah. So we're proud of that. Well, and they've also, I mean, this, like you said, this is a diverse county. I notice um, some of the newer ones are like um, Tahoes mm -hmm. or Blazers or something like that. Um, not pushing General Motors products, but mm -hmm. my husband always worked there, so that's all I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
but you need those for some of the hills, some of the fields you're going Absolutely. through, and, yes. and things like that. You need something with four-wheel drive. Absolutely. I mean, we answer calls uh, every day. I mean, mm -hmm. it's every day we answer calls that you have to go off road site. Right. And so those uh, SUVs are capable of doing that. And plus, nowadays, uh, you know, when I started law enforcement, you had a notebook and a, and a gun and maybe a camera if you bought your own. But <laughs> You know, all the equipment they carry now. I remember uh, Sheriff Fleming uh, talking about the fact that a, lo a lot of his deputies had to pr um, provide their own I went, um, weapons. Own weapons. I worked yeah. for Fleming Williams back then. You yeah. had to buy your own weapon and everything. Yeah. But the more equipment they uh, have to carry now than used to, and those SUVs are easier to stock that com equipment yeah. in. So, and they all and, have and they're laptops comparable, in them. Believe it or not, yeah, they do. They have the laptops in them where they can do their work there. Mm -hmm. They have a map the county in them. And, and the good thing about it, the cost of the SUV on the contract price is really not that higher than a car. So we can buy them economically mm -hmm. about as well as a car, and, and they're better serviceable they're, yeah, for us. Yeah, they're a sturdier and yeah. longer-lasting vehicle. Absolutely. Yeah, so a lot of things going on at the <laughs> store. <laughs> well, and it's exciting. You yeah. know, it's exciting every day. And as I so, told some of the employees the other day, uh, I look forward to coming to work every day. And that's what I want them to do. I want them to enjoy it that much and that they look forward to coming every day. That's great. Um, and we've only got, what, about a minute or two left. So okay. um, is there any last minute things that you want the public to know that maybe we haven't covered that um, you want, you know, okay, there's a, some event coming up mm -hmm. or, you know, someplace, something. Well, I think know. the main thing I would remind the public is, is that we want their eyes and ears. You know, mm -hmm. you only have the personnel you have and all the neighborhood watch programs and just citizens across the county watch your communities you know if you see something unusual a lot of people will see something and then they won't call and then they'll wait two or three days and something's happened and they say well i wish i'd a call yeah go ahead and call us we'd rather come out and check something and it not be anything rather than some crime happened that we could have prevented and not be able to because we didn't know about mm -hmm. it so if they see something call the 911 number or call the non-emergency number uh, in the phone book and, and and let our dispatchers know and we'll send somebody out and check yeah, I it keep and the help us with that. I keep the non-emergency uh, right in my phone mm -hmm. um, because every now and then I do see something that, um, that like the goats on 840. Uh, that's a regular <laughs> force. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen them lately so evidently somebody finally I, got the word. <laughs> I think somebody probably got the goats off of yeah. 840 for a while. <laughs> but um, Anyway, thank you so much for joining us and taking the time out of your very busy schedule so we could finally do this because I think it's important that the people know what's going on at the Sheriff's Department. It's not a mystery place. It's not some place where you can't find out information. Um, you've got a, an open, open door policy. And, um, and we've even gone Facebook. We yes. have a Facebook that shows <laughs> what we're doing to some extent. And also I want to remind people that we have a Citizens Academy. If they would like to know more about the Sheriff's mm -hmm. Office, we have a 12-week Citizens Academy on Thursday nights, and we try to do that during the year. Uh, if anybody wants to sign up for that, please call and, and come on in. And what we do is we allow a division each night to sort of tell what they do. You get to meet the officers. You get to see us in action. You get to do a ride-along with us uh, to actually go out in the community and see what our deputies yeah. do uh, and on it's a regular a, basis. And it's a good way to find out what they're doing and uh, find out ways you can support what they're doing. Absolutely, and we look forward to having people come in and, and yeah. go with us. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for joining us, and thank you for joining us on the Williamson County Connection. See you next time. Williamson County was named after Dr. Hugh Williamson, a signer of the U.S. Constitution. The county was incorporated on October 26, 1799. The official seal was adopted in July 1968. The seal, designed by county historian Virginia Bowman and journalist James H. Armistead, was accepted by Judge Fulton Greer at the July 15, 1968 quarterly court term. It features four quadrants, representing the diversity of the county. The upper left section depicts a flag and cannon, which symbolizes the rich history in the county. The upper right quadrant shows a schoolhouse illustrating the importance of education. The lower left portrays a Bible in front of a church window, which represents religion. 
The lower right segment shows farm animals denoting agriculture. 